Hi, and welcome to 5-Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn, and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. In every clinical trial, statistics play a very important part, because based on statistical analysis, decisions are made about new therapies, medicaments, or medical products on a binary level. But of course, the data could also yield a certain percentage showing that an outcome was positive, when in fact it should have been negative. But fortunately, these errors can be accounted for before starting with the conduction of the study. There are two kinds of errors that can occur. The first being a medicament that is released to the global market which is not efficacious. This is also called a false positive outcome or error of the first kind. The second error is exactly the opposite. A medicament that actually helps is not released to the market. That is also called false negative or error of the second kind. In a cross table we can visualize it as follows. There are the rows which state the decision of the test conducted and in the columns we find the true outcome of the two hypotheses. Now the error of the first kind is given when the null hypothesis is true, but the test would reject it. The error of the second kind would be if the alternative hypothesis is true, but the test is deciding in favor of the null hypothesis. Let's look at this graphically. What you can see here are two treatment groups. They are distinguished between their expected means, but show similar variances. The interesting part now is what happens in the overlapping area between the two treatment groups, where false positive and false negative results are occurring. Important here is to define the critical value, a threshold that could distinguish the two treatment groups. The part of the left treatment group that now is found on the right of this critical value is the proportion of falsely accepting the null hypothesis. On the other hand, the part of the right treatment arm that lies on the left of the critical value now represents the proportion of the falsely rejected null hypothesis. The latter kind of error is the error of the first kind or also called alpha error or type 1 error. It is one of the crucial factors that biostatisticians include already in the beginning of the clinical trial, for example in the sample size calculation. The probability of falsely accepting the null hypothesis is also called beta error or trap 2 error. Equally to the alpha error, it is determined in the planning phase of the clinical trial when considering the power of the statistical test, because the beta error is calculated by subtracting the power from 100%. For example, if you have a beta error of 10%, then the power of your test is 90%. So the probability of receiving true positive test results is 90% if your drug is really effective. So that is it for today. As you can see, there is always the risk to get false results in any direction within a clinical trial. But if they are accounted for from the beginning on, the risk is controllable. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, Make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.